All right, so let's just get right into this one. This one, ah, uh, got the blood pumping a bit, I guess you could say. I guess if none of us turned it off after halftime anyway. Uh, Denver falls to 3-7 and seven after a 27-23 to 23 defeat in Minnesota. Brandon Allen, 17 of 39 for 240 yards, 6.2 average, one touch, one pick, sack twice, lost eight yards on those sacks, and had a rating of 61.9. Cortland Sutton, he threw one pass, got 38 yards out of it, and overall, the Broncos were 18 of 40 for 270 yards for an average of seven yards a throw, and the one touch, one interception, and a combined quarterback rating of 66 and a half. So running the ball, Philip Lindsay was their top rusher. 16 carries, 67 yards, 4.2 average. Royce Freeman, 8 for 31, 3.9 average. Brandon Allen, 3 for 18, 6.0. Cortland Sutton carried it twice for 10 yards. Devontae Booker, 1 for 4. Janovich, 1 for 1, and they wouldn't show the replay of it, but Right when he grabbed, I guess it was like his wrist, I knew something was probably broken there. So hope that guy gets back and gets well soon. Don't like to see that. Uh, Noah Fant had two carries in this game for a tight end, kind of rare. Lost seven yards on these carries. And a total of 33 carries for 124 yards and a 3.8 average. Now, (laughs) receiving, Corlin Sutton kind of ate them alive a little bit today. Five of nine targets, 113 yards, and a 22.6 average yards per catch, and his longest was a 48-yarder. Tim Patrick, four for eight targets, 77 yards, 19.3 average. Noah Fant, four for 11, which is not good. Um, 60 yards and a 15 yards per catch average. Royce Freeman caught his lone target for 14. Lindsey, two for two and eight. Troy Fumagalli had the one touchdown, but outside of that, he didn't really have much because he was only targeted three times. That was the only ball he caught. Janovich, once again, hope he gets well soon. You never like to see that kind of injury. And he didn't really do much there either. So they were 5 of 18 on third down. That's 28%. 4 for 4 on fourth down. They were 2 of 5 in the red zone, so 40%. Plus 1 on the turnover margin. 6 penalties for 35 yards. And held the ball for 36 minutes and 43 seconds. Now, Minnesota, Cousins, um, good job today. Uh, 29 of 35 for 319 yards and 9.1 average yards per attempt. Three scores, no picks, and a rating of 133.2, but he was sacked five times for a loss of 35. So as far as Minnesota's going to get, I guess, in the stat book, so to speak, they get credit for 284 passing yards because he lost 35 yards on those five sacks. Now, running the ball, um, rare day, at least as of late for the Minnesota Vikings, where they could not run the ball. Delvin Cook, he got uh, 11 carries for 26 yards, a 2.4 yards per carry average. Abdullah, one for five. Madison, three for five. Cousins, two for one. Ham, one for none. With a grand total of 18 carries for 37 yards and 2.1 average, which isn't going to cut it against most teams. Diggs led them in receiving, caught all five of his targets for 121 yards in that score, so that's 24.2 average. Kyle Rudolph, five for five and 67 yards. The one touchdown, 13.4 yards per catch. Ola BC, 6 of 9 for 35 and a 5.8 yards per catch. Dalvin, 5 of 6 for 31 yards. Conklin, 2 of 3 for 28. Smith caught his first touchdown today, did Irv Smith Jr. Um, caught all three of his targets for 20 yards in that score. Abdullah, 2 for 2 for 11 yards. Ham, 1 for 1 for 6. Treadwell didn't catch his lone target, and I don't know why they target him when he's on Chris Harris, but that's whatever. Um... They were 5 of 12 on third down, so 42%. 2 of 2 on fourth down, 2 for 2 in the red zone, 5 for 49 in penalties, and they only held the ball for 23 minutes and 17 seconds, which is pretty below their average, I would say. Um, So, thoughts. Um, 
they kind of got Minnesota out of their element, which the good that obviously that's bad because usually that good things don't happen when you get out of your element like that in the NFL. But the good, um, Kirk was apparently ready for such occasion. And to me, he still looks a little different since the Thielen Diggs drama, so to speak. And I know he wasn't grading the, in the Kansas City loss, but even in that game, he still kept him in it. And I don't. I, Detroit to me is still the biggest example of this, where it, he checked to a play where he, he was throwing a deep crossing route to Stephon Diggs after a play fake, and those weren't the kinds of things we see from Kirk Cousins typically. So. Once again, he just kind of looked different today. He looked like he had complete control. He looked like he was kind of the commander-in-chief of this offense. He was kind of upping the tempo, and it was kind of like what Kirk wanted to do, Kirk would do. And that's good. That's pretty good because, you know, you're going to have these games where, okay, you can't run the ball. Maybe the defense isn't playing how they're supposed to. And, you know, these things happen. And can your $28 million a year quarterback rise to the occasion? And for at least today, our $28 million quarterback rose to the occasion. And this was his 10th fourth quarter comeback in his career. Um, It is his first, I believe, with the Minnesota Vikings, and that's that's good. And Denver, as a defense, I think they matched up really well with us. They're kind of like how Chicago does, where we're talking a very thick front. They're big. It's a 3-4. They're built to stop the run. We have a team that's predicated on the run with a bunch of small linemen. Doesn't really work well. And it's kind of similar to Chicago. So this doesn't really bode well with the future matchup with Chicago. And another thing I've noticed that they kind of do against these bigger fronts like this, they give them a dose of CJ Ham early for whatever reason. I don't know, but they need to stop doing it. Because to me, it felt like that first third down, they were not even really trying to go get that third down. It was just, oh, CJ Ham. Yeah, well, guess what? They have monsters up front, and your average lineman, I think they're kind of being kind when they say Garrett Bradbury's 300 pounds, 280 maybe, but 300, I'm not buying. And... I don't know, just not a big fan of the C.J. Ham early against these kinds of teams. It's kind of a trend I'm noticing. I think it's a bad trend. Don't like this habit. And this is a much-needed bye week that's coming up. I know this doesn't necessarily go with this game, but hopefully they can get Thielen back because that would be huge because I do think he was being sorely, sorely missed in that first half. Um, defense, they need, they need to prevent these big plays from happening. And it's not necessarily that guys are getting blown out of the water, so to speak. We're not getting guys who are running right behind us and they're scoring 70-yard touchdowns. It's they're there. They're just not making the plays, so to speak, which is almost more frustrating to me because it's we've seen them actually make these plays in the past, and I was just, mm, so close. And I get it. These happen these things happen to corners, but it, it is infuriating to see that we can't seem to be preventing these plays on a consistent basis as they kind of tend to be more on the losing end of these now, where in the past they kind of, they weren't getting picks, but they were always hitting the ball, getting the ball out. They were going for incomplete passes as opposed to 40 yard gains. And now I feel the opposite is happening where we're getting consistent big plays on us, which is not good. And I don't think they did a horrible job with the ground game. I don't think they did a great job because it was still effective enough to where that would work. But I still think if you could hold the big plays a little bit, I don't think we would be talking too much about the fact that they ran for like 124 yards, but they only got 3.8 yards of carry. So it wasn't like they were running left and right. They just had a lot more rushing attempts and that got them yards. Uh, overall yards. So I think the front seven as a whole actually played pretty decent. Uh, Jaleel Johnson kind of, just because he is the backup player in that defense, 
he kind of stuck out again to me a little bit. I liked how he played for the most part. I didn't think he was out of place. I actually think he might be an actual candidate to replace Shamar Stefan, potentially. Not that they will do it, knowing Zimmer, but I do think they should at least consider really rotating, getting a real rotation in when they get Lindball back. And just, I know I already kind of touched on this, but they do that back end needs to play better, but at the same time, this defense two weeks in a row has kind of made the winning play where Eric Kendricks hits it away from Zeke with, you know, in late in the fourth quarter. Today, J. Ron Kirst kind of stepped up to the plate and he had to some will argue that might be interference on both guys, but for the most part the refs were weird in this game. I wasn't a big fan of the refs overall in this game, but and that's for both sides. That's not necessarily like, oh, as a Viking person, they shafted Minnesota. No, I think – I do think they they kind of missed that holding call late. And the one on Reef, they didn't really show it at all. But from what I could see on it, I didn't think that was necessarily something that you would call a hold at the same time. It's like we've seen mo- like players – do more than that and get away with it. So the fact that they wiped off a 35 yard gain for that kind of sucks. And it was kind of a similar deal with the Broncos late in the fourth where they had the 15 yard run. I think it was, and they called a holding penalty on something that I don't think was really that much of a hold. And I don't know, but at the end of the day, they did make the winning play and, I'm glad they actually let them play that rep because it, there was some hand fighting on both sides and they kind of just let it go play. And I don't know if part of that was that they didn't want to decide a game or what, but they did do that. And speaking of penalties, I do think they were really bad today. And even though 5 for 49 really isn't that bad as a general scale of things, they were just really, really costly. Denver got three first downs in this game from penalty flags. And the Eric Wilson one is by far the worst one, I think, of it. Because I do think if we end up losing this game, people would point to that where it's like, I forget what the exact score was. But they were trying to climb back. And they allow, they finally force a punt. And then on fourth and three encroachment they go down kick a field goal so if minnesota can't come back if we don't get that last touchdown people might think "Mm." point to that flag and the two-point conversion i do want to go over that real quick as well um i think they only did that to make that a one possession game an eight point game so i really didn't mind it there And just as an overall feel, I feel like Minnesota kind of got lucky in this game a few times. Um, Mainly, mainly a missed field goal, missed McManus field goal. It was a 43-yarder with 8 minutes and 19 seconds left in the game, and the score then remained at 23-20. to And the reason why that's huge is because, well, 26-20, to All of a sudden, they score the touchdown. Minnesota goes up 27-26. They drive down there. They only need the three to win. So by forcing that to be a touchdown, that ended up winning Minnesota the game. As where if McManus is able to hit that field goal, we might be 7-4. and So, but one thing I will say is Minnesota found a way to win in an unorthodox way that they don't usually win. And... That's usually a good sign of things because this team challenged them. It was a team that didn't really match up well with. And I do remember telling you guys, like, this defense is real. I was unsure about that offense that they have. It seemed like they were kind of emptying the playbook a little bit, and they got more creative this week than they were in weeks past. But nonetheless, they got it done in a game where you probably shouldn't have won but also, I guess, should have your favored by 10. But when by the course of the game, you probably shouldn't have won that one. But they did take away the most consistent threat and in Dalvin Cook. 
and the defense didn't necessarily play well. So we finally got that game from Kirk Cousins. Like, oh, when everything's not going great, what can you do? Well, what he all he did was throw for 320 yards and three touchdowns and had 133.2 quarterback rating and won the game. So at least for now, he's proceeding to silence some people this year. I mean, they're always going to, I'm not like, they're not going to anoint him. No one's going to anoint him and crown him now because obviously he has to continue to do it, but it's a good start. <laughs> it's a good start. It just a roller coaster today. <laughs> um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, like sh sharing, subscribing always helps. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.